on the issue today. Um, we would like to welcome you all to um, Vision Committee. They are talking about that close their water. Certainly. Good evening, everyone. Council members Dennehy. Here. Smisher. Here. B. Smith. Stein. Tracy. Here. Worthington. Mayor Pro Tem Hamrit. Here. Mayor Smith. Here. Can you turn over to you? All right. Thank you. Hey, oh, wait, wait a second. Emily, can you keep us posted on how the sound is going for you? You know, it depends on who's speaking. Uh, Denise was real clear. You're a little less clear, Mayor. So it's just going to depend, I suppose. A terrible voice. Okay, thank you. All right. Yep. Uh, so tonight we're going to be discussing two separate ordinances, proposed ordinances. Uh, one is uh, regarding uh, backflow fines, and the other one is stormwater violations. And uh, both of these programs are mandated programs to the city, uh, backflowed by the state and the stormwater through our MS4 permits and the EPA. Um, we'll go ahead and start with backflow fines and I'll turn that over to Travis to talk about that ordinance. And, and just put that in proper perspective, these are unfunded means. <laughs> that is correct. So you guys have all seen the draft ordinance uh, by now. Um, the the intent on this is to give us a, kind of an extra step in being able to get some enforcement out there for people who aren't testing their backflow devices. Right now, our only uh, remediation step is turning people's water off. And we're very aware that if we were to do that for the vast majority of businesses, that it will shut down their business. Certainly not our intent to do that. So what we're trying to do is get a fine in place to um, be able to have that step and say, we are serious, we do need this done, um, but we're trying to be as, as kind of gentle about that as possible. So the, the proposed fine is uh, up to $250 per violation per day. Doesn't mean it has to be that, but it's uh, that's kind of the max that it is right now. To go back into a little bit of the why, um, as Ryan stated, uh, the state of Colorado re requires Canyon City as a water provider to protect the community's drinking water from contamination that could result in backflow conditions. Spe specifically, the Colorado primary drinking water regulations uh, requires uh, water suppliers develop and implement a written backflow prevention program. And we notify the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment of any suspected or confirmed backflow events ensure that they do not create conditions that would favor backflow in any of their facilities or throughout the water distribution system. We survey commercial businesses and multifamily dwellings to ensure that approved backflow prevention devices are installed and operating. And uh, as for this one, we ensure that backflow prevention standards are tested annually and records kept for compliance. So uh, what CDP and he can do to us uh, as an enforcement order, we can be subject to civil or criminal actions. So they can levy a thousand dollars a day by per violation, plus any additional public health costs on us. Um, so you know when we talk about a two hundred fifty dollars per day fine, that does that would not cover any fines that we would have for CDP. They can also do an administrative thousand dollars per day violation. Um, you know, if it was if it was ever shown that I was aware of a possible backflow event, but I did nothing to remedy the situation, I can lose my certifications uh, as well as if anybody got sick after like you know an extreme kind of example of this Flint, Michigan, people actually went to jail, so it could be criminal charges as well for operators and responsible charge. So that kind of gives you an idea of the seriousness that comes from the state of why we, we need to do this. So. Um, with that, I could kind of open it up to any questions that anybody may have on it. Um, I hear um, this opening statement on paper. It says that because we have a rise to account for over 60 days, it puts us in a position of possibly being a violation. Is there another line of what 
and what raises to knowledge? So there is. Um, in any given year, we have to hit 95% compliance. Is that right? Yeah, 0.9. So 90% compliance in any given year. Um, so there's also additional caveat to that, that the 10% that don't test, say in 2021, are required to do so in 2022 within 120 days of their application date. And so that's kind of where we came up with the 90 days um, before fines are in place to make sure that we are within that window if they don't test that we're within the 120 days uh, before we catch a violation of a site here. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. but, and you know, in, in addition to that, so you, you know, we have 90 days for that, but you know, if we're hitting up against that 120 days, we do have the, we still have the ability to shut off the water. Correct, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's 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 the end, end, you know, nuclear option of, of, you know, we really, really, really need this done. And to that point, that is in the state's opinion, that, that would be us controlling the backflow device. So either it's tested or the control of the backflow device would be turning the device off. If the water was turned off, what are the costs that should be turned off? I think those are pretty, pretty light. Gosh, I want to say it's like 30. I believe right now we're at 35. Yeah, so those costs are pretty minimal. To actually do a turn on. Besides losing the water. Yeah, I mean, losing the water is the main. Yeah, last day's revenue, I would, would imagine, would be more. Yeah, that would be. Right, right. So, again, yeah. that's that's the last step. We do not want to do that. But, you know, for these reasons, this, this is why we have to do that, though. And at some point, this this will start affecting our water confidence report that we have to put out on the basis. Right. So that would be another ramification that if we were in non-compliance for any given year, that's what's known as a tier three violation through CDPH and me, public park and public health environment. So tier three has to be issued every year on our consumer confidence reports as everybody gets uh, summertime, it goes by October and July. So that would be added added uh, kind of information on those. And so, you know, kind of a byproduct of that, you start having loss of confidence in water quality as soon as you start catching violations. Mm -hmm. How many violations do we have to do? Uh, so, yeah, we don't have any violations to do. So, sorry, how many people are doing the more than 60 days late? So, last time we pulled a report, I think it was around 30. Um, first, first today, I it down to 14 Yeah, so what we've done is we've done a little bit more uh, citizen engagement where, where James is going and actually doing site visits and kind of trying to provide uh, education. The other thing that we've seen uh, as a benefit of that, and we'll go through the timeline or proposed timeline and, and, and all that stuff, but uh, another benefit that we've seen to that is our letters have to go out to property owners. A lot of times property owners are different than who's operating the business. So the business owners don't get that, that letter. And so what we've seen is there could be a disconnect there. Um, so, then, you know, letting the business owner know they can then contact the property owner and say, hey, you know, we need to get this all figured out. So that, that can help. The other thing that we've seen is sometimes the device has been tested and we just haven't received the results. So what James can see is when he inspects the device, they put a tag on that device and he can look at, look at the date and say, okay, well, this has been tested. We just haven't received the results. So, you know, it's then figure that side of things out. We just need to be provided the results because sometimes the testers don't send that to us. They say, I can back to the property owner. The property owner might not even be at stake. And so it may not be their highest priority to send us the results. Um, more and more testers are doing a decent job of sending us the results as well, but it's not required for them to do so. So not all of them do that. Sometimes they just send it to the property owner, and the property owner may not know that they are required to send it to us. So just trying to provide that kind of education. So what process starting with receiving letters and need to get back? Sure. If you want to bring up that video. I'm the cross connection inspector. I'm the one with boots on the ground. Yeah. Um, so you can kind of see this. I mean, I was going to go through it, but I thought it's, it's kind of easy to actually have this as a visual as well. So this would be an example of a device that had an activation date in January. January 1st, the property owner has mailed out the first notice that backlog testing is required within 30 days. February 1st, if we have not received results, 
property owners and all that. The second note with step back load testing is, is now considered late. So this is where I was talking on February 15th, we actually do a site visit to remind property, the property, sorry, that uh, back load testing is late. That's where we can uh, do a back load device inspection to see if testing has actually occurred and whether that's, that is just something that needs to be cleared up. So now at February 15th, you know, we're 45 days ish, you know, depending on like the month. Um, March 1st, which would put, put us at roughly 60 days, property owners emailed a third notice via certified letter, 30 days until violation, that kind of language being in it. Um, and this is proposed as not what happens right now. Um, 30 days until violation. Then March 15th, so we'd be at 75 days, another second visit to one property, uh, the property that violation is going to be within the, in the next 15 days. April 1st, we've been 90 days. Property owners mail a violation notice via certified letter, 10 days until fines are imposed. And so we are also working with Catherine Legal to develop these letters to make sure that all is appropriate. Is there going to be a time there too? That way, you know, we tend to talk about that a little bit about whether we, you know, I just really hope that it doesn't get to that. Um, we certainly can. Because right now the second notice does have language in there saying that you know your, your water can be turned off and and we can certainly keep language to that effect in there. Um, I don't know if they'd be considered to it again. No. Yeah. You know, sure. yeah, you have a certain amount. Um, it gets a little tricky to be able to put that kind of thing in because that's additional time, James, seeing how much you know uh, an account actually has. You have to work with billing a lot more. I'm not saying it's it's, it's not a possible thing. It just creates a lot more. Work. And if you have a small water user as opposed to a large water user, you can have a small water user try to craft it so that it would. Protect the small water user, the big water user will be able to come to us. Yeah, exactly. Well, and then again, that's max, max 250 a day. Um, another reason that we that we kind of chose $250 a day is that's that's more than the cost of the test. So at that point, just get your test rather than pay it $250 fine. You know, I mean that's kind of a reason. You know, you don't want to make it financial financially feasible for a, a business owner to say, well, okay, I'll just pay the fine for you know for a while. You want to make it okay, it's more expensive to pay the fine than testing. I think one of the questions comes with mm -hmm. oh, it's yeah. thank you. Um, I do wonder if, if you would want to include something in there about if you, your other option, if you do not want to pay this fine, would be to let us know you turn your water off because I do think there could be people who. Aren't able to pay that fine, and maybe their business isn't actually open yet, or maybe you know, just a commercial building, but it's not to get there. Exactly. Well, that is a good point because you know, we do have accounts that are turned off for a variety of reasons, and actually, if they are turned off, they can go off the test list. Absolutely. So, so these back flow connections apply to businesses. So, any non risk. Um, yes, we're on non residential is what I do. Where does it where, where, where does it where does it say that? Um, I don't think it says it necessarily in ordinance. It's just kind of um, maybe it's too much of an implication, but if you're subject to testing, if this is uh, the requirements that are that are applied to that. So we'll call it there's a part of it. Yeah, it is in there, but it's mostly on the state regulations. Yeah. And, but, but only to the, uh, Correct. Yeah, so what, again, when, we, when I went through some of the, the things that the state requires us to do, what it's required for us to do is to survey a property. Uh, any new property coming in gets a survey from James. So any, any new bill is going to get this survey. And what that survey is, is looking at, um, um, how severe a backflow would be. So is it um, just a business that has a couple of people in it, or is it you know, a dry company that has a lot of chemicals that could then be put back in? So based on severity is, is what kind of backflow device has to go in. Does that kind of answer your question? So, so if 
So it doesn't apply to the fact that it's correct. We're single family homes. Right. So what is required for single family homes is a dual check device, but it, that a dual check device is not testable. And those can do the the and there and and we don't inspect for those. Correct. Except, for new uh, except for new builds. What we do is um, there are some older parts of town. Uh, we have not done a blanket where we inspect every every when we have 8,000 connections. So what we've done is as we work on a meter pit or a meter or something, we find that there's not a backflow device. Yeah. Then we're required to do it because now we know there's not a backflow device on that residence. So what we do is then we put a backflow device in that in the meter pit. And the backflow device would apply to this yeah, that's kind of fair, but I'm sure. Yeah, because yeah, there should be a shutoff valve in, in a bit, your meter, and then yeah. back the device just downstream. Just downstream where it counts. Correct. Because it has to be between the meters. Correct. Right. So if, if if we had every business in town that is out of 98 and they were required, that where does that put us? Um, well, with them, yeah, so like, with every, yeah, everybody, well, everybody say on a day, even when everybody implies that they push us up, yeah, that's a lot more. I wouldn't go shouting that out on the rooftop, well, I'm gonna create the bar for a uh, workload course, but to, to answer your question, that does not put us in violation. Yeah, there's a little more information going back to your other point about all the time. Um, so it's like. Some of, so some of my businesses, if they have a if they're a commercial restaurant and they have a fire system, that I think I have two backflow switches, one for my fire system and one for my commercial restaurant, and then those are more expensive to put in by a lot, and and then and then they're they're more to to respect. Mm -hmm. A lot of the businesses where I just have a single retail, most of them one person, one toilet, one sink, and they don't let anybody use their restaurant. So that they did, there's a different department. <laughs> and so that, so that, and that they must be do respect. Um, and so that you still have to have all the compliance. Um, and that, and just going back to, you know, so like, so I have, I think I have nine backflow prevention devices that I'm responsible for, four of the more expensive ones and the bottom of the less expensive ones. And they come up at, at different times, but a bunch of them all come up at the same time. Like this last, the last couple of years, it's been problematic keeping them done. It's called where I call river valley because I have to have my my motor fire department are are more cumbersome because only very few people do that story. It's one of the few people that does it for the river valley. But then they have to schedule all of them, and then they have to do that. I usually don't have it sixty days by the time I get everything done, but I always comply. And so, and and I was talking to Travis earlier. He's you know, and they're very good. They 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 know, you know, they know what you're working on. They know what you're trying to comply and stuff like that. It's the economy here, um, and and also it's also commercial, so um, multi-family. You know, so if you have people living upstairs in the building, that all falls into that. So that's all one year, all together. And then this applies to industrial also. Correct. Yes. And uh, I don't know if it belong if uh, they enacted it yet, but uh, they were looking at agriculture as well, correct? They are. Yeah, yeah, they are. So anybody that have a sprinkler system would be required to have a test for the But thankfully, they have not done it yet. Sprinkler system, there's more triggers that have to be passed. I believe that's that's irrigation. I already have some. People in town that send me reports, they just do it on their own. Oh. Uh, but talking of irrigation, yes, they are talking about coming in. So irrigation for the crops. Irrigation on your personal lawn. Uh, so lawn, lawn, lawn. Yeah. Yes, sir. So these new rules could sweep all of the country. Um, yeah, I mean, if you have your irrigation, yeah, unfortunately, you know, it's there. There's a few people that don't water lawns here in town, but we generally, you know. By uh, so yeah. how would that affect if somebody was using ditch water? Um, it would have zero effect because that ditch water would be connected to um, our, our water system. Oh, 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 yeah. just, it does okay. make a good yeah. point because if they did happen to one night hook their ditch water to their home, that's what 
my assemblies are there to protect us from. That's a great point. That, that That's exactly problem. what it's for. That yeah, is a that true cross problem. connection. Yes. 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 So I really appreciate the process that you went through, and I'm sure you'll be able to say it from the public a lot more. We're focusing on the disconnect and having some problems with the public. My concern is that I don't think the infection wants to see those steps. I wonder if it seems like it just goes straight to the, like, when you're starting to go to the violation, and I don't think the, like, the notice is going to be yeah, I think part of part of the reasoning for that is we want to be able to give ourselves a little more leeway with that. You know, if the ninety days is not working, you know, we would love to be able to change that and be a policy. What does that mean? Well, I mean, to like that point, like some of hers takes out to sixty days. You know, if there's something that we're not seeing where there's a, a property owner that you know, for some odd reason there can't do it within ninety days, you know, we want to be able to adjust that. So we're not we're not hitting people that just can't get it done. Do you think it would be um completely understand that and appreciate you wanting to build the flexibility? I wonder um I wonder if you can consider the line that you would have said like after X, Y, Z steps happen, then this happens, just so that you're not not necessarily putting in a specific date and time so just letting like part of the policy being that you get to written the benefits that you like are in the benefit so that it's clear when the violation would actually start. Because I really appreciate that you have all this stuff in place and that it would have to be at least 90 days and potentially more. But the way that it reads right now, like it reads like it's going to happen 10 days after your advice. Yeah, I guess that's that's a fair point for sure. Um, the only point that I would make, and we can do that if that's the way that you guys would like to see it, is if there is um, an egregious account that say their their backlog is broken, and we are aware that they are broken. We can't let that be in, you know. So like we go out there, or a tester were to go out there and see that it's in non-compliance. But then they don't take care of it within 60 days or something like that. We need to have a little bit of flexibility to take care of that situation. And then, you know, to add to that, um, I mean, again, when it's talking about your certification and other city, like personnel's mm -hmm. personal certification, I would even add, or personally add in line in that says, you know, if there is backflow preventers that are broken. So that it's clear. I think that is that in the it's in the federal regulation. It's in the federal regulation, but yeah, they have a limit how many days I'm allowed to get. Yeah, they have 60 days to to fix a broken or a, a, a failed test. Okay. Yeah. Then might be working that federal regulation so that we're you know we're here and people don't wonder why we're involved in this process. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I guess in, in, in an extreme extreme case where somebody would just go take their backflow device out, or we became aware of it, you know, whatever happened, but you never know. You know, again, we have to have some latitude to be able to deal with that immediately. Yeah. Question about the you well, um, I mean, I was, I was happy to talk to that support, but I really do know the reason why that had that. And, uh, and yeah, and then they can be very expensive to, to put in. I mean, I set $4,000 last year to put it in for it. And, uh, and then you know, I have a special, which is going to add. Add another couple thousand, twelve dollars a year per, you know, because of all that we have. Um, but um, I was just thinking that, and I guess it's, it's probably not feasible. But if you just had a single person with the city that was assigned going around and checking back for information, and then you pay that fee to the city, it seemed like it would almost be take care of a lot of the issues. There are a lot of it's had, you know, you got to call the plumber, you got to get scheduled, you got to have them get over, you know, maybe the fire system ones would not be fall into that criteria, but, um, and I know that, you know, and that person would do other things too, but that all they did was to have a prevention inspection. It seemed like that almost, and I, and you, I, you know, the building owner would pay them, but at least then you wouldn't have this, um, 
And I'm sure there's probably some yeah, I mean, problems. Two, two points on that, right? Well, two points on that is one, um, then you have city personnel going on the private property, and you have them not being uh, responsible for private property, okay. which generally we, we, we really want to okay. uh, steer clear from. As you know, as well as and there's a reason why fire systems are more expensive because right. if you mess that up, you could turn sprinklers off. Oh, you know, yeah, and then know. you're talking about a lot, a lot of things. So then it's you know added insurance for us. So that's that's kind of why I would really say probably not the best idea for government to go into private private businesses and then conduct the tests. Uh, but you, your point is taken. That you know it's actually a question that's James. And it's, you know, that's that's one of the things you said. There's it's a lot of liability there. Yeah. And yeah. 750 of them, it takes a little while to test. Right. Yeah. 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 Current letters that we that we send out how we do provide a list. Back so you know qualified back testers because they have to go through certification. James has to have those. And we, as the city, have to approve those people. Right. So we look at each one. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. 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 No. No. Yeah. They're all. They're all through. It's all through the map. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's all based on insulation. Station. I know one thing we have talked about is backing some of those off of December and November because our you know end of year report it's not due until May first. May first, yeah. So we do have some time to do that, but it'd be kind of nice to not be dealing with any six year ninety day accounts into the following year. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about doing that. Um, I have been. been decided that yeah, you've been kind of one thing that that. Has been a bit of an issue that we've cleared up. Is anytime something's been late, that becomes a new activation date, and we we pop that, and now we're, we're not doing that. So you know, it's not based on their test performed; it's their original activation date. Yeah. So I don't know. Just to maybe awareness, because I think community, but I think there's scammers out there that have no about the regulations, and they're keeping track. My husband who was back was working in the warrants. Literally about a week later, we had a world of the health of testing, and it was like, I don't know what to do. I've not heard that before. That is yeah. Yeah. I would do that. not not even once. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we can certainly put some stuff out for public education. So, but to uh, pick up on Amy, the what we're doing is we're adding violation language to to our essentially. Violation section. Right. Okay. But we don't, in the, in the regulation itself, we don't say what is a violation. For instance, if you look on page three under G, now there's some policy statements for this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Number two, it says water service in the premise shall be denied if it's continued. Statement by the utility if certain conditions are well, probably those, those conditions should be termed violations because then that does tell somebody what, what the violation is. Right now, the violation is kind of undefined and it, and it wasn't correct. And really, the regulation would say, what is it? Is, is it a violation if you uh, um, remove or bypass your tobacco? And it should be. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it should be. So that language needs to then work to say that in terms of the, in the body of the English. Which, which, which conditions of violations are violations? Well, because right now it's a pretty, you know, it's, um, it's kind of off of the director's discretion without the way to talk. Yeah, I, I think it would be a good idea if you, if you had like a letter that went out to business owners and the building industry, especially business owners, and, so that they could be aware. Um, you know, I, I think I'm an exception because I, I, you know, I have all the buildings that drive around me, but um, you know, a lot of people don't you know why you have that code prevention device, you know, why they exist, and what happens if you don't have them. Sure. And I think people would be a lot more understanding. I know I'm getting a lot more sense because I just found out all that stuff because 
you know, like, what's the fact of why, why do we have to do this? It's just another tax, it's just another, you know, fine, it's just another it's water. Water. Yeah, it ends up in a letter that doesn't go in your water, but a lot of people. Oh, absolutely. No, these are yeah, these water. Are yeah. We could put it with the letters that actually go out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. that's a huge thing. Yeah, we do have a like you said in the policy, it's kind of generalities, but you know, there is some some listed in like improved backlog of management when you bypass when protected cross protection exists on the premises. And this is probably where there could be some clarity in approved backlog of vendors not maintained oh, or tested, maybe added. Well, what well, I would recommend is the water regular the beginning water service in the institution tonight for this continued and it should be considered a violation as we have the So you get a violation language up there because each of those things are serious mm -hmm. and are the worthy of a violation. Because if somebody did one of those uh or when they were supposed to, then that will trigger our own right? Is the um, in that section G2D, is the maintenance contained with the testing? Or would we want to add in another one that says it's not tested? Yeah, I think we say maintain or tested. Yeah, because I think maintain would be um, to go on if it's if it tests but it fails. And then if there are maintenance that need to be. Um, the way it's worded is maintenance is tested. Maintenance is testing. Yes. And, and that's the way yeah. it's worded. But we can always provide a little clarity. You know, you maintain? No, I don't do it. And I don't have blood test failed. Why do they not pass? They can pass the valves. So the question was, why Why would they fail? Um, there's a lot of rubber parts inside, so a lot of check valves. They sit over the year and they just kind of check. Yeah. A lot of the rubber parts inside fail. Yeah. So, but, but you don't know that. Yeah. On certain assemblies, correct. Yeah. Some cattle some tails, some of them will leave. Yeah. Others won't. So, so there's not really a way. Well, one, there's not a way to maintain that. And that's where the annual yeah. testing comes in. Yeah. 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 Understood. So it just needs to be clarified in that, in that feed, uh, G2D. Yeah. yeah. So, any feedback that the uh, uh, maintenance is not a to make it so to put it in a little bit more of a time to make sure that it doesn't just get to the end of the year. Oh, yeah, well, we're actually having to do that. Yeah. Did they provide a little bit more of a timeline in there? Okay. Yeah. And I'm sure they're less. I totally agree that it doesn't have to be the this, 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 all right, are we ready to modify? I have just a couple of typos, but I'm happy to put those over. Oh, sure. I did forward those typos that you would oh, forward those to us. Well, one more question on that. Does the state have a more reliable language related to after you reach down to the customer, penalize the customer, or is it just we or we? I am the middle one. So, so they. Oftentimes, state regulatory agencies have all the time they say, hey, if you, whatever, you know, city or whoever is enforcing the rules, aren't doing the job, we're going to be taught. EPA does that state. And so, and so that, yeah, and, but probably not. We're the ones who the city. There's probably going to be a Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, this funny, you the thing that we don't want is for the state to be taking over our lives. No. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, well, no, we just no. don't. Yeah, we, we don't want to be on you know. I mean, what they do is they come down every three years for a sanitary survey and we'll review all the things. 
And so they'll come and check the file and we submit our report. So they'll come and then find the them. Them. Yeah, yeah, next one. Them. So that's how the James keep those records. <laughs> um, but it's funny you mentioned the EPA because the state is in between us and the EPA. It's all yeah, exactly. from, the from the EPA. The federal um, state, but the state has a federal state. Yeah, yeah. Certain times my career all the time. Yeah, they're not going. Okay. 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 You want to introduce yes, stormwater is uh, almost uh, the inverse uh, issue of really, uh, what we're looking at from backflow. So we have a process uh, for uh, 10 days and uh, everything that you know, Travis is trying to implement on. on or backflow for the other side. Uh, what we don't have in the stormwater ordinance is a way to actually uh, address uh, chronic violators or uh, emergency situations. And I'll hand it over to Glenda to talk a little bit more about that and uh, what that means and maybe some examples of um, you know, those types of instances. So per our MS4 permit from CDPHE again, uh, we are required to have um, regulations and methods to enforce against illegal discharges to our storm sewer system or to our waterways. Our stormwater system includes city streets, curbs, and gutters. Those are considered part of our storm sewer system. We have a pretty well lined out um, method. And it's lined not only in our municipal codes, but in various manuals for the stormwater program. In most cases, what's in our code works fine. Uh, people who um, have an illegal discharge, whether from a construction site or, or general public, are given either a verbal or a written notice of non compliance. Our code gives them 10 days. Um, which I worry about a little bit because the state wants things cleaned up, but we kind of tell them verbally or write on the written notice immediately, but no later than 10 days. Um, if it's not cleaned up or taken care of, we, could, we have the ability to move to other uh, enforcement actions, including stop work orders and issuance of fines. The way our code, though, currently is written, it does not give the ability in egregious situations where it is blatant dumping or a chronic violator that has been cited numerous times for the same type of violation, the ability to move straight to giving them a fine. Uh, we do have the ability if the city comes in and cleans it up, to get charged them the cost of abatement. But although rare, we do and have had instances where the uh, violation is egregious enough that I feel and that it should go directly to a fine. I do not issue fines on site at the moment. I have always, the process has been, it's documented, it's taken to now the director of public works, they approve it, then we issue the written notice of the file. But I would, we're proposing a modification so that in those egregious instances, we don't have to first give them a notice, written notice of non-compliance, give them the 10 days to clean it up, then, if they don't, uh, you know, then issue the fine. And the fines again are there from the day that the violation was observed or occurred. 
um, to the day it was remedied. So it's $250 per day per violation. And we do have that ability. But um, I'll give you some instances. This summer, we had somebody dump uh, cooking oil straight into uh, storm drain. We were lucky it got trapped in there and did not make it to the Oil Creek ditch and then onto the river. In that instance, if I could have positively identified the violator right away, I would have asked to go straight to a fine, not give them a notice um, of non-violation in 10 days to clean it up. We have instances where um, we do have chronic violators where they have been cited numerous times over several sites with the same violations. And at some point we are required to increase enforcement against chronic violators. So this would, this is actually um, our single family residential contractors, builders, um, constantly tracking sediment off into the streets, letting trash blow around, um, dumping concrete, washing their concrete out in the streets. And when you cite them over six different sites for the same violation, um, the state considers that chronic and they want to see increased enforcement against chronic and what they call recalcitrant violators. So recalcitrant would go through, they got a notice, written notice or a verbal notice and they just flat out refuse to do anything about it. Then you move forward with increased enforcement, which would be the notice of violation and enforcement fine. So all we're, we're looking at modifying is just to put that language in there. Like I said, they're rare um, and they do go, it's by the director's um, uh, approval and it's by stormwater personnel's discretion to bring that to the director for immediate fines rather than the normal steps that we take. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that is actually in our code. They can, if they disagree or they want to um, ask for an appeal or appeal it, they have to, and it's all lined out. And actually, when I give them, when we do do a, um, a actual monetary fine, they are verbally instructed on that appeal process also. But they have to appeal to the city administrator in writing within 10 days. And then he looks at all of the evidence, their appeal, and makes a decision. And usually a one on one conversation with them to understand circumstances and all those types of things. One or two. Six. As Glenda said, it's not very good much. Um, you know, the one thing that we are concerned about, though, is that, um, you know, we, we have been informed and are seeing uh, across the state that CDPHE is stepping up their enforcement and their auditing uh, of these types of programs. So uh, we want to make sure that we have something in place and um, you know, that we can address these types of issues when we do it for uh, to be compliant with the school. Uh, as a matter of fact, we received notice that one of our job sites is going to be audited uh, to check uh, this week, correct? Yes. So that's the uh, the state construction permit, and they do um, inspections, oversight inspections for those permits uh, throughout the state. And so we do have a city capital improvement project that has a state construction permit. And they will be coming down to do a state inspection tomorrow. So um, that's typical. The for the MS4, and again, this is like the the drinking water. This comes from the EPA, the Federal um, Clean Water Act. The state administers that for the EPA. The state also has a uh, 
agreement with the EPA that they will do audits on MS floors a certain number every year. They have not been meeting those. So actually the EPA has been doing these audits on other MS floors. And through the Colorado Stormwater Council, uh, those that have been audited share the findings. And we all look then very closely at those areas of our program and tweak them as needed. I would like to also remind you if the state would come down and do an audit and we have findings and they decide to move enforcement, it's $54,700 per day per violation. It's not a thousand for stormwater. So that's just random community audit or is there? No, it's, it's random. It's very random. No, no. They are required to do a certain number of audits per permit term, which is typically five years. Um, like I said, the state has does not have the personnel and has not met their quota that they agreed to do for the EPA. So the EPA is doing so. There's been three audits so far this year. Uh, one on the Western Slope and two on the Grant Range. Do you get warning? Do yes, you, you get warning. warning. You get yeah. warning. But we all prefer that we share information and make sure our programs are strong and and uh, don't have those findings. <laughs> um, the state has our um, MS4 permit actually expired at the end of June this year. They administratively extended it. They have announced that they intend to start doing a review of the permit and putting out draft language this fall. So we will be looking very closely at what they propose to update their language. We'll be providing comments. Um, <clears throat> the last time that this happened in when it was uh, issued in 2016, it went from about a 60 page permit to uh, 140 pages. And I've seen what they did with the non-standard MS4 permit. I expect that there's going to be a lot of comments and quite significant changes proposed. More regulation, very, very much more prescriptive. But at this point, um, so the ordinance is just simply, you know, um, adding in the extra language that does give us the ability that if it's a very egregious, um, severe instance of illegal dumping or chronic violation of our stormwater regulations, that we have the ability to move straight to fines um, rather than go through three other steps first. Um, it doesn't mean that that's necessarily what happens every time in most instances, the process that we have is sufficient. It gets it taken care of, but occasionally you get something that just, it's, it's very toxic to the environment or water, it's blatantly done um, with disregard for our regulations. And um, FI is probably the most efficient way of getting the message across that this is not allowed. Um, I'm curious because you know, I there's a lot of interviews, you see a lot of yeah, I mean, the you know, situations are different. I, mean, you know, I think for severe, you know, Brenda and I were you know, talking about this, but you know, eminent uh, spills into waterways would be severe. Um, you know, I think egregious, you know, where, where it's something that's blatantly been done before. Uh, just complete disregard for the rules. And those are the things that we're 
we're most concerned. I think um, on the chronic side, we're probably going to have to lean a little bit more towards uh, what what the state and EPA are you know, defining as far as chronic goes. Uh, I will tell you that the state refuses to put in writing their definition of chronic and recalcitrant. They will tell us verbally what they feel is chronic and recalcitrant. They refuse to put it in the definitions of the permit. I agree. It's possible to, to add in a little bit more of a uh, definition around severe. Um, the dangers to the health and safety of the people in the environment is severe and uh, likely to be repeated before the state. Yes. A lot of times you can um, define severe by the economic consequences. So that's 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 a potential but so I think we just the um so severe dangerous to the health and safety of people in the environment who are likely to be repeated before the end of the surgery. The, that that seems to be a little bit problematic because you're predicting behavior as opposed to punishing past behavior and we don't generally know to do that. Predict behavior. Uh, and I don't I don't I don't mind if there's you know something in there that's that's a, a multiplier or something like that based on penalty. But it's obviously that it's but it's, it's a kind of a real slippery slope to talk about what, what it would be. And I would agree. Um, in some of my written, uh, in my illicit discharge manual, so I have um, serious discharges may require immediate escalation to a higher level of enforcement. Depends on several factors, severity of the violation, which would be duration, quality, and quantity of pollutants, effect on public safety and environment. Violators' knowledge of the regulations being violated, so whether it's neglig just negligence, unknowing, or intentional, a history of violations and or enforcement actions. So that's what we would be basing a chronic on. They have a, a very well-documented history of the same type of violation and enforcement actions and the potential deterrent value of the enforcement action. And this is the, uh, so which one? Do you the illicit discharge detection and elimination manual. So, so I, I don't, I don't know those, those are all the things to do. Could, could we reference the manual? Because uh, uh, we, we do update the manual from time to time. Sure, and that's that kind yeah, this one, this one's bad. Bad. This one's been updated last year. Exactly. like 2019 was the last time it was updated. But, you know, right. as regulations come in from yes. the state, it may, may change, but right. I have some of that flexibility. Yeah. I'm mean, I'm right. I don't know if this is our, I mean, they hyperlink within the code itself. I don't know if they hyperlink to outside sources. I'll have to check on it. Um, and it looks like you have a hand up, possible interest. Hi, um, it's very difficult to hear some folks, so I apologize if this has already been touched on. This is just a question about wording in uh, section E2, the sentence at the end of E2 where it says, however, no fine shall exceed $250 per day, the violation occurs or continues. I just that wording doesn't seem clear to me per day the violation i'm not sure if that's right but per day on the day no no i, I think it's i think it's trying to say the per day 
It should say from the day the violation occurs. From the day, that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I have to see what we can do to integrate with the other. Yeah. The, the, the county has Bluetooth microphones. Now, we don't have a system that would require a different system of all we've got, which would cost money. But it, it, it does allow you, you know, to might be, you know, think about that in the future. Because then it does allow you to have microphones all over the place. But I guess it's kind of when we do that, <laughs> so, um, and I will add one other thing in case uh, citizens or council member are worried about uh, stormwater or city personnel going rampant and charging fines everywhere. Uh, we average one or two issuances of fines a year, if even that. I really, really try to work with people. I try to do education and outreach. Most cases, a verbal or written notice of non-compliance is more than enough. But like I said, we do have those like rare occasions where the fine seems to have more impact or would have more impact. And we do need to have that ability to, to keep the state feeling like we are following RMS for regulations. Because we are CDPH. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, the extended hand of the uh, I have another question. Uh, there are three that mm -hmm. says the city shall not prosecute intellectual violators or seek the imposition of criminal penalties. Do, do we have, is there we have criminal penalties in any part of this code here? Yes, we do. Um, so criminal penalties are actually the same um, section. It's uh, Title 20, Section point uh, 20.1.160, Section F. And it does talk about criminal penalties. And those are those are uh, within within our court system. Yes. Court yes. Okay. And in 14 years, I've never taken anybody to court. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I think that'd be an email. I apologize if this is the way to put it. I sent that this afternoon. So you'll, you'll have that in your boxes. And then it has a copy of it. Uh, this, does this function as a get out of jail free card? So if we say if you pay a civil penalty, we're not going to criminally charge you. If someone voluntarily pays the civil penalty, will that create a get out of jail free situation? That may be a question for Austin. I don't know that I know the. Uh... So, so, what is, is the purpose? The purpose of this is probably to encourage compliance, correct? Yeah, encourage compliance. And, you know, I, I think the uh, criminal penalties are more along the lines of contaminants and I mean you know, the, the, there are instances where you may want to charge criminal penalties if um, you know if there are contaminants in the engine and the water and things like that. Yeah, so uh, this, this is this is a stormwater, this is a stormwater control ordinance and that that's the purpose. There are other ordinances PDPHE has to deal with discharges other than stormwater. That, that can fall into that. So yes. if you're if you're discharging some substance, uh, even if it's through a stormwater system, it may not use CDPHE may not use stormwater regulations to criminally prosecute that. Right. Uh, so that statement says the city won't. That doesn't say that the state or um, the 
state attorneys, uh, environmental um, justice department may not come after you. Right? And if something is spilled in, into our storm sewer system, it needs to be reported to the CDPH spill line. So we have a mandatory report. For yes. Uh, yeah, that, that's right. And just to add on that, um, the way that the section is drafted, it operates so that the violation can't be paid until it's rectified. And so if you have paid your violation already, then um, the issue should have been rectified. And in that case, the city chose to issue the fine instead of go after criminal penalties. Are the, what, what, what of magnitude of criminal penalties? Are they on the what thousand five thousand dollars? I'm having a little trouble hearing, but um, <clears throat> the magnitude of the criminal penalties. Oh, I'd have to look up the section in your code, but it would be a misdemeanor, and then there would be a range that the municipal judge would be able to issue a fine under. But there will be a maximum stated in your code. I'm not sure off the top of my head what your maximum is. It's not very much. Whatever it is, it's not very much. Yeah, it's not a ton. Compared to fifty-four thousand. Any other questions for the Okay. So what? Sorry, just uh, if the director of you. Yeah, at the beginning of the ordinance, it does uh, define it. it. Um, it within the code itself, I don't know if it's in the, or, is it in the ordinance. It's not in this particular yeah. section. So, so I'm back over the back over we got the same thing as the director. Yes, so in the definitions for this, for the Title 20, it says director means the public works director of the city of Canyon City or design. Okay. So um, we're following our new ordinance process. So uh, if Council members who are present are good with us making the proposed changes. We'll bring this back probably the second meeting in October for the first meeting. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Sure. And I like this. Uh, you know, just a, a comment on the process. I really like this because this is, this is a lot better to do it this way and make sure we get right for. For, you know, for formal consideration. Yeah. Right. This is this is a lot better. Hey, nobody's on my violation either. I ever had any crazy, but years ago, when the when the when the sidewalks and then everybody was throwing the stormwater came up into the inside, we met it. So the boys dropped down the stairs out. This is Barbie doll. We send it down the stormwater. <laughs> 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 Pull that out. Okay, got what? Six months ago. Well, Somebody's down at the river and went, oh my God, Barbie dogs drowned. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.